Hey friends, thanks for stopping in. In this video, I'm gonna talk about how we calculate slip and fall settlements here in New York. And I'll give you some real life examples from some of the biggest cases I've worked on and some of the things that I think about as a personal injury attorney when these cases come up. It's a great topic. Make sure to stick around till the end for some important tips for everyone who either walks, rides, drives, or skates around New York City. Let's go. If you're new here, welcome. I'm attorney Kyle Newman and I make videos about personal injury and medical malpractice cases and topics that come up in everyday life as a personal injury attorney. I wanna make this stuff as accessible and understandable for you, the viewer, as possible. So God forbid you find yourself in one of these situations, you're armed with some really good information. But before we start this thing up, hit that subscribe button and tap that bell icon to get notified anytime we post videos. We do so regularly and we love to hear from our viewers. So drop us a comment or hit me up with any questions you might have about anything we discuss here today. So slip and falls, how much are we talking about here? Well, look, before we even get to money damages, you have to first realize that unless that injured person first proves that a responsible party or an entity was negligent, then you don't go anywhere. And look, how do we do this? Really two ways. One is by showing that the property owner created the danger. For instance, they mopped the floor of a supermarket and didn't put out a caution sign. Or secondly, by showing that that property owner had notice of the condition that caused your trip and fall. So notice is actually split into two types. So if you're injured, you have really two shots at proving this. The first type is actual notice, meaning somebody actually informed the property owner or that person about the danger, but they didn't take reasonable steps to repair it or fix it. Now think of things like written complaints with actual notice. Then there's something called constructive notice, which means did that danger exist for long enough that any reasonable person would have repaired it or fixed it before an accident occurred. So when we're evaluating the amount of a slip and fall accident, you have to look at these things, which is really the first part of a case and it's called the liability portion of the case. It means can we prove someone was responsible? And if we can prove this, we have to look at first, how strong or weak is our argument? Because if liability is tough, it's definitely going to affect how much you'll be willing to settle because it's going to be a higher risk that you'll win if your case goes to trial. The next thing you have to look at is how much insurance coverage does the defendant or the person that you're suing actually have? If you're suing the city of New York, no problem. They have unlimited money. Homeowners usually have between 500,000 and a million and a half dollars. And you know, big companies might have an umbrella policy that goes 10 million and up. The point is every case is gonna be different. And God forbid a party you sue has no insurance, which I've seen many times over the course of my career, that is definitely going to affect how much you take for your settlement because in that instance, you'll really take anything because getting money when someone has to pay out of pocket can be an extremely difficult task. Next up is of course, how severe is the injury? And in slip and fall injuries can be absolutely horrific. You know, I've seen cases where severe ankle fractures led to, you know, surgeries with plates and screws, I'm talking traumatic brain injuries, severe low back injuries. I mean, the list goes on, they can be really, really bad. So next up, you have to look at who is it that got hurt? How old were they? Were they working at the time? Are they gonna be disabled? If so, how much income is it that that person is going to lose? You have to look at all these things and you know other things like, did they have pre-existing injuries to the same body parts? Would they be a good witness in court? You gotta look carefully at the person because it's going to be, make a huge difference about how the other side evaluates the case and what they value uh, those injuries. Another thing we absolutely have to look at is where did the accident happen and can we bring the case in a venue which is going to be favorable to the client and not negatively impact the value of the case, which unfortunately the venue of certain cases most certainly has an impact. For instance, counties north of New York City like Westchester County and Rockland County 
I'm sorry, but they are notoriously anti-plaintiff and they're known to give far less money to injury victims than say here in the Bronx or in Brooklyn. All right, then once you take all these things like the age of the person, their demographics, the venue, the injury, we can then look at things like a jury verdict reporter, which is actually a service that catalogs all the jury verdicts and the settlements here in New York. And then you can go back and look up you know, cases based on keywords to look for similar cases. For instance, if I wanted to search a trimalleolar fracture in a 42 year old nurse who's now disabled, you know, we could do something like that and see what search results we get and see if there's any similar cases that are in line with those injuries and the nature of the case so that we can then present the case to our client and say, look, this is the ballpark of what we could possibly get. And also that way we have leverage that when we go to see the judge or debate the case with the other side, we could say, look, this is the value of other similar cases, pay us this amount. Remember, since injury attorneys, we work on contingency fee. The more that you get, the more we get. So we always fight for our clients for every last dollar. All right, if you made it this far, make sure to smash that like button and subscribe to our channel. I promise you, it'll be worth it. This is Kyle Newman, and I'll see you soon.